Oh, it's very hard, though, Mika. You've got to cut him some slack here. It's very hard to stay focused when you know uh, the crime rate. And Willie and I talk about this all the time. I know. That's true, because the, the crime, president told us. The crime rate is the worst that it's been, yep. Willie, I think since 1783. That's right. Most people are being murdered. Yeah. <laughs> in yeah, Chicago in alone, if you're president yeah. of the United States and 80 percent of people in Chicago are being murdered? Yeah. I mean, how can you focus on the so, black I, I think There's also the, 1.5 million people that are going to show up in Melbourne. Florida. Yeah. Florida I will tell you, the, these it's attacks on fake news, and I, I while delivering didn't fake news. Want, while delivering misinformation and lies, what, what wonderfully this presidency ironic. doesn't feel real. This doesn't feel... Are you saying, Mika, this feels like a fake presidency? It's a presidency? fake presidency. I'm, I'm I don't at know. that point. I don't know exactly what that no, means. No, no. Someone tell me what's going on here. We have a president who goes out in front of America for an hour and ten minutes of riffing and just making up stuff well, well, and throwing out lies right and left. Our president, this is our president. That's what we saw during the campaign. I mean, it's the no. same. He is literally the same exact person that we saw during the campaign. Nothing changed. Anyone who said he's going to become more presidential, if you believed him when he said that, you're wrong. That this is who he is. He won off this. He's going to continue to, to uh, act the way that he does. It fundamentally is who he is. He took. He did that press conference so yesterday what is that? because he was itching to to spar, to get out there, to talk, to to defend himself. This is a man who spent uh, the entire campaign going on television and holding a rally every single day. He was on national television saying whatever he wanted to say every single day. And this is what he cared about. And he's actually, these are the things that, he, that cared he cared with about with everything that's going on in our world and in our country and all the different jobs that have yet to be filled and other countries are looking at our country going, what is going on there? This nation seems to be right. destabilizing. He cares about what? But he's, he's giving off the appearance that he is doing something something by signing the executive orders and by holding these roundtables and having the uh, the photo ops with the business leaders and talking about rolling back regulation promising Obamacare he's so giving it's a off fake presidency he's it's giving the off the, at least for now he's giving off the appearance that things are getting done and that is what's resonating with it's, the people it feels that like it, another it's way a bit of, of it's a bit of a Potemkin presidency they, they're, they're setting these things up they're not actually getting out and doing anything real it's all about press but you know and Mark, one of the things that we've noticed, certainly since he's become elected president, you know, when you're campaigning, you campaign seven days a week and you have an excuse to go to rallies every single day. Some of his worst tweets have come on Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. He is so addicted to headlines that he needs on Saturday morning he starts panicking because the swirl of activity and the controversy is gone. And Action if you want junkie. to dig into his brain, that's what you do. When things get quiet on Saturday morning, he starts freaking out and he starts sending out nasty tweets about John Lewis or you, you pick the worst subjects so for him judges. to send out so-called judges. He will do that on Saturday morning so the swirl continues. For the president, winning a war against CNN's 10 o'clock show or the latest New York Times story is the way he judges whether he's a success or failure. Yeah, but but, does, but he, does he know he's only helping CNN? Well, does he know he's only helping the New York I don't think Times? He does, but, but, he, but he is. His, his 2017 will be judged by does he pass either tax reform? or repeal and replace Not for him, care. though. Well, but I'm saying that's what history will judge. That's what congressional Republicans will judge. The biggest thing about yesterday was his chances of passing tax reform or health care were set back substantially by what happened yesterday. Because people on Capitol Hill in both parties view what happened no longer are the tweets and the attacks and the pettiness and the lies a sideshow. He made them the main event. Mm. Yeah. There, there is one difference between Trump now and Trump during the campaign. When things started to go very badly for Trump during the campaign, that Trump would listen to people around him after Wisconsin, for oh. instance. He, he retreated, he went back. Uh, you know, the last 10 days of the campaign. He, he got he scared in the and last And he got scared, exactly. Month or so, the campaign when right. he went on a teleprompter. So he, he got scared then, he got scared a couple of times, but right now, he actually thinks what everything's he going great, of? right? Because yeah. he's, he's he's listening to the Rasmussen poll, which again, people on and the, the hill, people, people on him. the hill, pay absolutely no attention to Rasmussen. Well, the, listen, I think that it, we're still 
early on. I mean, it's been, what is it, 26 days? Oh, God. It's been 26 days. Oh, my God. Um, it can go, it can get worse in there before he starts to see how bad it's gotten. And before, um, you know, Bannon was the one that got him on track during the campaign. I'm not sure um, how much, how much he's going to be able to corral him in this new role. This is, I mean, this is just completely different. He doesn't have the same controls any longer. He's not living in his house. Um, he is suddenly responsible for, uh, you know, an entire government that he doesn't quite understand. He cannot control people with non-disclosure agreements so these leaks keep coming out this is the first time in his life that he has employees Maggie and, and, Abram, and by the way he's got all these have agencies not had this Katie, yeah. and it's state Rex Tillerson has absolutely nobody under him working. Uh, you, you can, you can, go, that, that you can go agency by agency by agency. Not only does he not know how to run a government, he's got, uh, the people aren't filling up the spots right well, now. Well, Tillerson, I mean, they're not even having State Department briefings yet. We found yeah. out that Tillerson was meeting with Lavrov, uh, the Russian foreign minister, through the Kremlin. There's I mean, no that's, press shop. There's no press shop. There's no press shop. Um, but look at the, the news surrounding uh, Bob uh, Harwood and why he was not going to take the national security advisor role because uh, the reporting is that he could not fill the NSC with the people that he would have wanted in place. Right. And so if you're going to exclude the never Trumpers who uh, were very many during the campaign, often the ones that were the most qualified, and now you're going to try and lure in the West and they don't want to be a part of it, you are left with with a, um, a thin staff who doesn't really understand politics, doesn't understand government, doesn't understand Washington, and will continue to allow the president to go off on these tangents and get in his own way. The Republicans um, have a stomach for it as long as they can get their agenda done. When they yeah. see this start really bumping up, getting you know reforms in that they want, getting Obamacare repealed and then replaced, et cetera, um, then there's going to be more of a, a problem uh, between the Republicans I, and Trump. The president needs to do a speech, and it can't be written by a 31-year-old tyrant or a blithering media-obsessed clothing seller. And it can't be written pretty much by anybody in there at this point because they're all so worn down and scared that they're all stuttering and dropping their papers around him and calling him Mr. Trump, Mr. President, Mr. Trump. It needs to stop. He needs to get some real men and women in there who actually know what they're doing, who would actually tell him what they think. Tell him. He doesn't it's going want that. really badly. You can't lie to the American people. And you can't lie about your national security advisor. No, that was advisor. what was so fundamental about the Mike Flynn stuff. It, he thinks that it was a problem, that there were leaks, that the no, media no. treated him unfairly. Ultimately, Michael Flynn didn't just lie to the administration. He lied to the American public. And Donald Trump backed him up on it yesterday, saying that he would have ordered him to do the same. I mean, that is an astonishing uh, circumstance and set of events that, that it gets almost, I mean, it's so, it's so jaw-dropping and eye-opening. It, it's hard hard to see it in the in the oncoming daily hurricane that is the news Street coming out of this White House. Stupid. And that's why the loss of Harwood is, or Harwood, excuse Harwood. me, is so significant. He was respected by Republicans and Democrats Would alike. You heard from Republicans country. in the foreign policy establishment and also people from the Obama administration who said, if this guy gets in, it's a it's great good. thing for the country. And so when he pulled out, that was a huge loss. And let's just put that on the president. That's on Trump. Katie Turr, thank you very much. Julie Pace, thank you as well.